crotch, bring it back. Single leg swing. Let me teach you how to wrestle. Okay. Let me teach you how to wrestle. All right. Hit the Welcome back to Wrestling Mindset right after the Olympic trials. And what an unbelievable trials it was. Right, Jeff? It was fun. It was fun. <laughs> what an experience. Our first oh, one, our, our first Olympic trials that we've been to. Yeah. Yeah, I brought two of my kids there, and they're like, how many Olympic trials have you been to before? They just, they just assume that you've been to a lot of these. So this is, this is our first time there, first time at the Olympic trials. Um, and it was at Penn State. It was in driving distance. We're in New Jersey, so it wasn't too far. And we were there. We got to be there the day before. Jay Hunter was presenting at the, the Silver Coaches College. So we got in a day early, got a nice Airbnb. And, um, man, we saw legends in action. Legends being made and legends on their way out. And speaking of legends, what a legendary move doing this for your eldest son's birthday. His Johnny turned eight. So he That's came. Correct. So we got to epic. Epic is the word. Epic's <laughs> the word we kept using. I was like, that was great. I was like, what a weekend. It was epic. Well, who, <laughs> came, epic. who came out? It was it was not only Johnny and Anthony, two two of two of your five kids. Um, the two wrestle the two wrestlers, the two You gotta shout them out. So so it's our group from Pursuit Wrestling with the Howman brothers. So we've been going for, I think, since the end of last summer, maybe maybe September. So it's a, gr a small group of eight, nine-year-olds, seven, eight, nine-year-olds. My sons, Johnny and Anthony, uh, their friends, William. We had William there. We had Aiden. We had Andrew and Hudson. And then we had Adrian. So we had our, our group of seven there that trains with, with the Howmans at Pursuit. And uh, we got a nice Airbnb. And it was it was an epic birthday party, a birthday they, party for Johnny. We're hoping that it really fans the flames for uh, for wrestling, for the love of the sport. That's what I said. Doing doing these, um, having having something like this where they could actually go to, and it's like surrounded by wrestling. And remember, the, the kids are young. I, I do think these kids are the future. I mean, they are on our Monday night calls. We should actually say something about that. That these are the, these are the young guys who are seven eight years old who are on our Monday night calls every Monday at eight thirty. So. I mean, not only are they Hulkamaniacs in the sense that they're wearing the, the wrestling mindset, they're wearing the Z up in the stands, going up and down the bleachers, up and down, or the, you know, at the Bryce Jordan arena. But these guys are taking their mindset serious. But just for them to all be together and to be in the Airbnb that we had, which we called the mansion, it was like a log yeah. cabin, which was which was the log cabin in the shape of a mansion. So it was um <laughs> What shape is a mansion? <laughs> big. Big, <laughs> big big rectangle. A big, sh a, a big one, and and hats off to their dads who are very good at cooking, also. So nice breakfast, but yeah, these it was it was it was awesome. Again, a great event for them to be together, and then and then just the, being able to watch some of the best wrestling. I mean, they they actually said that they just kind of took for granted that we were going to be going to Paris after this. That's right. They're like, oh, we're going. Like, Dad, are we going to the Olympics? Like, I was like no, we're not going to go. I was like, it's I was like, it's in Paris, France. Like, so, so are we going to go? I was like, no, nah, not this one. Not this one. <laughs> But maybe next one in LA. So That's let's. Right. So this one definitely, fun. this one definitely sets the stage for that. So, um, man, different, different for us being there. At the, that was our first media credentialed event. I mean, we've been to many events. We've been on the floor for different events, but the first media credential event, in large part, thanks to this podcast and all of you who have you, you know, been liking and subscribing and sharing with friends. And if you haven't, um, we invite you to please do so. Like, subscribe, share with friends. Click the bell. Give us the thumbs up. And That's right. we were, I was going to say we were able to get the media credentials, not because of our company, Wrestling Mindset and everyone that we help, but through our podcast. Right. That was like that this makes right here. Media. So if you saw if you saw the Z's at the Olympic trials, make sure you drop us a comment. That's that's right. And it just very or different. If, or if you saw us at the Fan Fest. Right. We were at the we were at, um, you know, obviously the event we were at Fan Fest. Um, the Silver Coaches College, Jay Connor presented with presented there in front of, uh, I think it was club coaches, high school coaches, and some college coaches. Jay Hunter was there with us at the Airbnb. He was at the event. He was at the Fan Fest. Um, and if you got an email from him this week, you're in, you're in great shape, right, Gene? Yeah, if any, if any of our, um, we had a lot of applicants to be mindset coaches. If you got an email from him, it means uh, you've passed to the next stage of the game. It doesn't automatically mean you're in, but it's it's a good step for you. But yeah, Jake was there, and that was at Mike Clayton's coaching certification. We've been doing a lot with Mike Clayton, USA Wrestling. He's another guy who's been around forever. We have his old binder from, um, you know, the re wrestling. He's got a whole big thing on, you know, the 
mind-body connection of wrestling. He was former coach at Stevens Institute of Technology uh, while we were working with the team, brought us in. And now we just had our coaches, our, our mindset coaches certification. And then we um, tacked on his his program on top of it for anyone who wanted to do it. So yeah, awesome, awesome stuff with Mike Clayton. Hardcore coaches. We saw coaches from Missouri, Colorado, Washington State. And, and a lot of those guys had to go back after. They didn't even get to watch the wrestling. But it was a great... It was a great coach's uh, dinner that Jake and I went to, but it was, it was, it was a lot of fun, but I guess we'll what, get, yeah. I was going to say, let's start with maybe what, what didn't you like about the event or what, you know, maybe the way to put it is what could have they done better? I guess my initial thought, it's like, it was as a spectator, it was long. The days were long and there was like a, a very little gap in between. And then, you know, you, you hear about the complaints from some of the, some of the wrestlers. I mean, they didn't complain about it, but you hear about, you know, that guys are cutting weight till one and two in the morning, right? Aaron Brooks, I heard that, um, trying to make weight. It's like he had to run the gauntlet, win the tournament, and then he has to make weight the next day. It's like, I don't know, weigh-ins are probably at eight o'clock, and he was cutting weight until 2 a.m. You know, if you want to see these wrestlers at their best, we just got to find better solutions. Yeah, I get it. People have to lose weight. They have to get down to weight, but there's got to be, I think there's got to be something that's that's a little bit better. Also, in terms of the you know, the, the finals when it's like men's freestyle, women's freestyle Greco, I think it's hard for the, the casual fan, right? Because it's like, all right, who's wrestling here? You know, what's, what's Greco? What's freestyle? It's just hard to follow. Um, and I just thought it was, I thought it was kind of slow. That would be my, that'd be the critique. Yeah. The, the one, the, yeah, d definitely. Uh, I, Personally, for me, being down there, um, Matt's side, it is so different being Matt level watching this versus being way up there in the stands, especially someone like myself who can't sit still. The fact that I was able to have um, kind of a dual role there, not only was I watching as a spectator, but then following the people out. You guys probably saw the wrestling mindset on there. I, I stayed down there as long as I could have until they like actually booted me over to the other side. Like, okay, you can't stand right in the front of the mat, but I was able to be there and then camera angles of all the different things that were going on so that was that was great being able to follow some of the wrestlers out uh clip some of the interviews make sure you check out our, our pages for all that 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 was good yeah i mean i don't i don't like the the uncertainty of of when what match is coming up i really think yeah. they need to separate i think they really need to separate men's women's and greco they're just three different things and different people are interested in those different things i mean I, it's all wrestling don't get me wrong it's great and P and they should be like, OK, yeah, if they're all going to be at the same event, I think you've got to run the freestyle all at once, the Greco all at once, the women's all at once. And I think we have to be honest with ourselves. Like, well, why if if that if we're not if we don't want to if they don't want to do that, well, why? What's 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 the purpose? I guess I I get it that we want to show everyone love. And again, awesome stuff with Greco, awesome stuff with the women's, obviously awesome stuff with the, with the men's freestyle. But you got to know when which match is coming up. And it's like the spectators, they're planning their weekend out of this. So it's like to keep everyone there all at once. I don't I don't think like I, I get it that we're trying to grow women's wrestling and trying to grow uh, Greco. But it's like, uh, you know, everyone everyone's planning their weekend and, and, and planning their day and to have everyone cooped up inside. I'm sure the Greco and the women don't appreciate that either because it's a long weekend for them. Yeah. And yeah, back to what you said before about we have to put the health of the athletes in the forefront, a lot of these guys are pulling some serious weight. Again, also another benefit of being uh, Matt side. I mean, I'm probably weighing close to 195 pounds right now. Could lose some weight for the summer, but I mean, these guys like 163, 145, they're looking big, really big. So, and I mean, them coming down, it's like, how are these people at this weight? So for them, and then several times I saw with they want an interview with Nick Lee, interview with Zane Rutherford right after the match, and like. They're telling the guys, they're, they're telling the fans and they're telling the um the um media, right? The, me the yeah. media back there. They're like, they're like, I got to lose my weight. It's like, I'll do it later. I, I got to lose my weight. And it's like and and some of the and some of the media people were ticked off. They were like, you know, Nolf, he just beat Burroughs. And and right away, he's like, he's like, yep, I got a great teammate in the finals. He's going to we'll talk to you later or something. And it was like and one of the guys was like, are you kidding me? Like, like, I mean, after after Nolf ran by. And they weren't like mad at Nolf per se, but they were like, uh, maybe they were, I don't know, but they weren't happy that they they were like, that's all he gave us. He said like two lines, yeah. then ran out. He's got to get the weight off. And I told the media people, and, and this is the difference being a wrestler versus a lot of these other media people where, you know, a lot of these people not even weren't wrestlers, but weren't athletes even. And that, that's pretty apparent when you watch. And a lot of them were though. So we're not putting all of them down. Don't, don't, don't misunderstand there, but they're like, you know, are you kidding me? And I'm like, 
These guys, they have a sweat going right now. If you're down that much weight, it's hard to get a sweat going. They need to get a hoodie on immediately. So that's not, and then being up to the wee hours of the night, that's just messed up. Carter Storacci had an impromptu interview behind the scenes, which is also great to see. Like these interviews just kind of emerged on their own. Which we, we posted up, it's on our Instagram. Yeah. Wrestling said Instagram, you can watch. I think it, most of it on there. I'm sure it's on YouTube as that well. Was, that wasn't the majority of the interview. That was only that was only the part about when the, there was one guy who kept asking him. They're like, "So are you going to go for five, face or are you going to start face punching?" And he's going, "If you are going to oh, go yeah. with the face punching, so you know, what do you feel like that?" So you know, and if the face punching, he just said face punching three times. I just thought it was hilarious. I, so was four, I think it was four or five. I just listened to that. I listened to that the other I day. Yeah. He said he was 60-40, though. He said he's going to talk to his coaches. Like, I'm going to just talk to the greatest coaches 60, in the world. 40, 60 40 now that he's coming back for to pursue his fifth. So that would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I would I would imagine if he comes back, he's going up a weight. There's no way Carter Strachey's coming back at 174. I think he comes back, he's going 184. So I don't know what that looks like for the team, but he looks he's talk to Coach Kale about that. Hopefully he gets the green light to go up and wait. He looked he looked big. Yeah, um, he, saw him behind the scenes. Uh, David Carr spoke to him, just a great guy overall. We talked a lot about perspective and faith and, and just how big that is. Uh, he, he's taller than I expected. Or maybe I'm I'm sure I'm probably shorter than he expected, or maybe not. But it was good. He's, wow. he's a real good guy. Other thing we were talking before the show, mm -hmm. I saw from Coach Brian Stoll, Del Barton head coach, he posted, he actually posted on Facebook um, a guy's name, Nathan Shy. He posted, it's on, it's on Twitter now. I'll probably retweet it actually so people could find it. But 10 takeaways from the Olympic trials. And, and one of them, I think number two is the event belongs somewhere without a host school. Fort Worth was pretty much perfect if anyone wants my opinion. So, you know, we're getting at there. It's a guy that was at Penn State. So I don't know, maybe 75% of the people there were Penn State fans. And was it eight out of 12 people in the finals wrestled for the Nittany Lion Wrestling Club? So in a sense, hey, they deserve it. You have all these guys that are, the, you know, in the hunt to win it. And four out of the six for men's freestyle did win. Do they deserve it as a host school? Sure. But is, isn't it an advantage? It's like, I mean, imagine like, you know, you're training in your own gym. It's like you're sleeping in your own bed. You don't have to travel. And then you have, you know, 75% of the fans, if not more, are, are cheering you on. It's like that's, that's an advantage, which probably isn't right for, <laughs> for the rest of the field. Yeah, and it's like, and I'm I'm always I'm always a big proponent of let's do this someplace warm. Like, you want to grow wrestling in Florida? Well, why is the only wrestling event in Florida other than the sunshine the the sunshine open, which is right after Christmas? Which uh, you know, how many teams are really going out to that? We were there when I was coaching at Springfield College, but the only event in in Florida that I'm aware of is the National Wrestling Coaches Convention, and that's the last weekend of July, the first weekend of August, and that's like the one that's like the the two of the weeks out of the year where it's warmer weather in, in, in New Jersey than it is in Florida. So it's like, that's it's not pretty humid out there too. <clears throat> not that we're complaining. It's an awesome event. We plan on going to again. Oh yeah. No, oh, for sure. That's you know, one time you don't need to be in Florida. That's, that's my, that's my point. And that, you know, I'm, I'm for NCAAs there. It's like, if we're going to, if we're going to make a vacation out of this, let's make a vacation out of this. So yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm for doing it someplace warm. I mean, you, you know, you're always seeing it's like, it's always like you're. I feel like it's always like a in Iowa or Kansas City or or Wisconsin. It's like no, no. Let's go someplace warm. Like let's. No, nah, it's just that's just me. I'm sure Kyle Dake would agree. He's big. He's a big fan of get, of getting the sunlight. Clearly, he had a, he had a solid tan going into it as well. And um, Pantaleo always has a great tan. That's right. Um, let's go through uh, the, the the other elephant in the room is just you know not that there's anything like USA wrestling can do about it, but just not enough weight classes. Right, you see a lot of guys that are just competing in a weight that's clearly not their optimal weight. You know, you look at like James Green is always the example they they give. And I think he's 0-6, 0-7 at the Olympic trials. But we know it's like if there's a 70 kilograms, it's like he's he's winning, dominating. Um, and he, he has in the past, right? And you have guys like, you know, like Vito who couldn't compete. You know, our guy Vito, it's like he wasn't able to compete with, with injuries and the weight. It's like Dayton Fix, it's clearly not the best weight for him. Nick Suriano, right? Those guys are just too big for that weight for that to be their optimal weight, you know? So like you're seeing guys that are obviously they're still competing at a very high level, but it's, it's just probably not near their best because it, even Zane Rutherford, I mean, he won the whole thing, but you know, I mean, he won the worlds last year and he just looked like he had more energy, more horsepower, but he was, he was able to get it done in spite of that. And then Aaron Brooks too, you know, he's cutting weight till 2 AM 
he had to come down from 197. It's like he's he's big for the weight. It's like um, you know, it's good he made the team, but there's I would guess 92 kilograms is probably even a better weight for him. Yeah, it's like it's like health. We have to look out for the health of the athletes, and six weights is just too just just too few. You know, it's too few. Can't yeah. have that. And, and like you know, you you see that like the guys, um, in order to be truly competitive, they got to come down. I and mean, we were talking to shoot Brian shoot Frank Jasper from the from Vision mm -hmm. Quest. Yeah, he's yeah he's awesome. We we were, yeah. We, yeah we we had we had a great time with him at, at Fan Fest. That was a great shape. Yeah, he might be more ripped than than in Vision Quest for 40 years ago. He's, well, he's taking it serious, and you know we're, we're going through like you know tips and tricks and talking things like bulletproof coffee and intermittent fasting, and you know he's got a plan, and and obviously he he works with Nick Suriano closely, and you know with in in a coaching capacity of like health and nutrition. It sounds like their plan was for Suriano to go up. To 145 and then at the or, or whatever it was and then he came down five kilograms it was like it was like let's get stronger and stuff like that and go up and then it's like the olympics comes around it's like yeah he's going down it's like and he's like oh all right like <laughs> it's that was part of the plan but we see this over and over again that when guys are in between guys usually come down not all the time but i would say it's like 80 20 if a guy could go up or go down guy goes down um because it's, it's hard like look at you know, it's a guy like Nashawn Garrett. It's like, first of all, he's towards the end of his career, but it's like, you know, it's like, was he going to go down to 125 or he's going to go up to 140? He went, he went up to 145 and like Mendez, I was saying hats off to Mendez. He wrestled awesome. I was, I was yeah, super impressed with him. Anyone yeah. who was there that watched him wrestle, you know, you, we saw him the Big Ten, we saw him at the NCAAs and then here, and he said it in his interviews, like he's here to win. He's not looking to participate. He's, he's really, truly looking to win. And he said he believes he could beat anyone. And then, you know, during his interview, I'm talking to um, Logan Steber behind the scenes there, world champ in his own right, four-time NCAA champ. I don't need to inter inter in, um, introduce Logan Steber. Everyone knows who he is. And and he said, yeah, Mendez has definitely jumped levels. And I said, uh, well, that, you know, that, that's readily apparent to anyone who's been watching wrestling. And Mendez just just looks awesome. And I mean, he he handed it to Nashawn Garrett. And that's impressive because you don't normally see matches, especially in freestyle, where Nashawn Garrett doesn't score at least seven points against really good guys. And it's like he scored no points against him. My point is, it's like, again, being up a weight, it, it makes a difference. They got they got to add more. They got to add more weights. I was talking to Valentin Kalika the other day uh, about this. You just seen he's been on a lot more of our podcasts lately. Um, has become a friend <clears throat> and we have to credit him also for the tech, you know, sometimes an unsung hero behind Helen Marulis and, and Amita Lure. Um, he was their coach, brought them all overseas. I got all kinds of pictures of them when they were training with the men out in Georgia and all different places. Valentin took them, but like Valentin said in two, 2013, when they were going to cut wrestling in general, the Olympic committee, then they're like, okay, well now six weight classes and we were like yes we'll take it it's like well we'll take anything it's well our, our bargaining power wasn't strong when they were going to cut wrestling so you know they they bargained us down with the old the, the old hegelian dialectic thesis antithesis synthesis um if any of you know about that type of stuff so but yeah they they bargained us down so now it's only six weight classes but yeah most guys they have to go down like you say well they could choose to go up most guys go down though so it's not healthy it's not healthy yeah all right, maybe we go through the weight classes. All right, 25, Spencer Lee. kilograms, Spencer Lee. Yeah. I picked, I, him. I picked him once, yeah, once Vito is out. Yeah. Um, I, yeah I, I, he's yeah. a guy that, you know, kind of like we were saying, he, he's one that is in the right weight class, right? It's like he's always competed at 125. It's like he's always looked good. It's like so I think that's something that he has going for him other than the fact that he's like Superman on the mat, right? That – Going back to the, the recap from Nathan Chai, said American ne needs Spencer Lee, mini Sajulayev, built for freestyle. And they, they put it well. This guy is so good that his few losses have taken a disproportionate share of attention. It really isn't fair. <laughs> and it says this guy's been one of the most exciting wrestlers in the last 10 years. Like, it's funny. We were, we were up, you know, watching, you know, me and my friends and, and the kids. We're like, There's not a lot of pins, you know, it's like. Like, why, why, is, why are there no pins? And it's like, well, you know, these guys are really good. It's hard to pin someone who's really good. And sure enough, it's like, well, who's, if there's anyone who's going to pin someone and somebody who's really good, it's going to be Spencer Lee. And sure yeah. enough, he, he ended with, with a fall and, against Gilman, which is very appropriate for Spencer Lee. And what, what, hap and what happened? Gil Gilman slipped or um, Spencer Lee caught him with in a certain situation? No, he didn't get caught. He got packed. Got yeah, packed. Got packed, and I even and, said, "Oh, Scott, he finds somehow he found he finds his way into a bar arm, and it's like no, he doesn't find his way there. He gets himself there because he does it in freestyle. He does it in folk style. 
he got himself into a Gable bar, which we should probably call Spencer Lee bar now. But, um, you know, he got there. He put him away. Uh, I, I thought Gilman wrestled really well outside of his first match, which was, I think he won like 5-4, 6-5 um, against uh, the high school sensation. Right? Who was that against? Yep. Uh, um, Jack's, Jack's forced. Jack's forced. Yeah, that was an awesome match. He had some nice slide buys. But after that, it's like he looked really good against Fix. I think he shut him out. And Fix looked really good against Suriano. Right? I think he won 5-1. And then, you know, Spencer Their highest scoring wins. match ever. <laughs> Their highest scoring match ever by far. <laughs> That's right. By double. And then, um, and then Spencer Lee just, he gets it done. Gilman looked good. I thought Gilman wrestled well. Um, you know, he was in a few bad positions and, you know, that, that cost him, but it was a fun match. You know, the fans wanted that one for a while. He even said that he said he was, Gilman said he was excited for the fans. And, um, <laughs> it's good to see that like, you know, they kind of squashed the beef between them or, or there, maybe there never was any, and that was just the media made it out that way. But, um, you know, two good competitors going after it. And, um, now Spencer Lee's got to qualify the weight, which, which I think he will. Yeah, and, Sp and Spencer even said in the interview when I was back there, he said, um, you know, once I, you know, he told him that he he always looked up to him, and he said that he's um he's once once a Hawkeye, always a Hawkeye, and it's does you know that that's great. But he was Spencer Lee was obviously fired up. I mean, you can't say enough about Gilman. He's got the most medals of any American at one twenty five, right at the lowest weight class. We they came no, up. With he was number he was number two. Number uh, two. Rick Sanders. Rick Sanders was ahead of him. Right, but he was ahead of like Brands, Zeke Jones. Um, Who's the other one um, from Wisconsin? Yeah, it's nuts. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like it's nuts. Oh, Bar uh, Barry Davis. Barry Davis. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, it's nuts. So I mean, I mean, how, how good he is. It just seemed like when you see Spencer Lee come out without like two knee braces on, he's had a whole year to to, to recover, or at least a whole year not. We'll put it this way: a whole year not to be completely grinded down through a college right. wrestling season, which which raises the old question about you know the, the the competing versus not competing in college, right? But um, not we're not to go down that road, but you, you and you see also that he's um, you watch that flow wrestling clip that they had in the archives about talking about Gilman saying years ago, try having Spencer Lee in the room and being humbled. It's like, it really looked like it was going to be in Spencer Lee's favor, the whole thing. And obviously he was, he was real pumped after he won, you know, so I, I was right there when he was hugging his parents. We yeah, got, we got that video and, and he came off the mat, fired up. He's looking at brands like he wasn't ready for that. He wasn't, obviously he was just, you know, amped up. And this goes back to the brands thing where he said, I saw him Spencer Lee wear, wearing his emotion on his sleeves. And I said, that guy's a hawk. It's like what he was just fired up, right? He was just fired up after the match. He wasn't necessarily wearing his heart on on his sleeves. And then also, yeah, it's, I was just gonna say it's it's awesome to see him do it, given that like his his college career kind of ended about as bad as as it could have. Right? He got pinned. It's like he was hurt. He got pinned. He didn't wrestle back. He got it like like um like I said before, he got a tremendous amount of heat for it, and it's like he gets a disproportionate amount of attention for his losses because he's. Not only so, kills good, everyone. so dominant. It's like he, he, kills, he wins he eight nothing. Everyone. It's always been that way. It's like he wins eight nothing. It's like what happened with Spencer Lee? It's like he only beat that guy from, you know, from Wisconsin eight nothing or whoever it is from Michigan eight nothing. It's like yeah, the guy who ended up finishing third at that weight or something. You know, it's like eight nothing is pretty dominant. But that's that's the that's the bar that you know he's and, it's graded. And and Brands called him the goat. He's like when he's when he's wrestling at his best, there's no one better. It's like, that's a high compliment coming from Brands, especially knowing Iowa always at that, at that lowest weight always had hammers, always, and also knowing that he was in that weight himself, and he's calling him the goat. So yeah. we, we've had some good interviews with Spencer Lee. You're going to want to check those out on our podcast. We'll, we're going to try to get him again. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure it's going to be tough in these next couple of weeks because he's competing in maybe two, three weeks. I think it's I think it's May 10th, 11th, 12th, something like that in oh, Turkey. Yeah. But um. And then hats and then hats off to Gilman. Um, we saw him make. Oh, it was brought up to our attention by one of our mindset coaches, Michael Engberg. Sent me a text message. He said, "Notice that, notice that Thomas Gilman made the sign of the cross even after he lost." He said that might have been the first time he saw that. We see a lot of people um, praying after they win, but the fact yeah. that he that he lost, I think we we do have to say give they give that shout out to Penn State of how they developed the guys as as humans as as people that you know um, even though maybe they're they're coming from different different faiths or different denominations seems like the people are genuinely starting to take faith more serious at Penn state and just overall growth and development, yep. you know, developing, 
Yeah, I was going to say developing character. That's one of the guys like I've been really impressed with him the last few years. And it was clearly after he went to Penn State. And it doesn't mean that Iowa wasn't preaching that because I think the, the Brands brothers and, you know, they're on point and they're trying to develop the, the person as Definitely. a human. But he said it he, when he left Iowa, it's like he needed to grow up. And it's like he just, you know, went to the right place, I think, at the right time. And, um, you know, it's like he was guy like one of those guys just seemed like one of the mean wrestlers to like just a guy with great perspective and, you know, the, the type of guy you'd want around your kids, you know, coaching them and mentoring them. So hats off to Gilman. It's like, I think he's, yeah. I mean, I've always liked watching him wrestle and compete. And I think he's always been intense and he still is, but like the perspective and the faith and, you know, everything about him now, it's just cool to see the, the character evolution. Abs abs absolutely. Uh, that, that was great. And then, like, like you back to think about what you said before about Spencer Lee. How quickly it seemed like all of wrestling turned against him, and then he, yeah. and then, and and then he yeah. won to have to have that moment. That was great. But it also goes to show. And this, our coach uh, Don Ernst, God rest his soul, he always said, you know, we got to be concerned with our people. It's not about everyone else. It's about our people. Not not in a selfish way. He didn't mean it, but he was making the point that. You know, people are going to be with you. People are going to be with you when you're winning and against you when you're losing. So don't, you know, don't take it personal. And we saw that again with Jordan Burroughs. I know we're skipping weights here, but to me, that seemed like the right juxtaposition between um, Spencer Lee. Now he got the hero's welcome. Like, hey, he's back on everyone's good graces when he's winning, which is nuts. And then it's like, and then now Jordan Burroughs, who basically, I just didn't like the way he was treated at all this this weekend. And uh, yeah, no. I, I get it that people, I get it that people like upsets and I get it that he's not the home team. Right. So like, I, I, yeah, you get it that people are going to cheer for the other guy, but there's a big difference between cheering for a guy. And David Carr and I were speaking about this, the big yeah. difference between cheering for a guy versus like intentionally rooting against a guy, especially a guy who's done so much good for the sport. Even if he didn't do good for the sport, it'd be messed up. It just makes it all the worse given who he is and, 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 and what he's done, not just as, as, um, success on the map but also being a truly good ambassador for the sport so yeah. and i know it's not every person in the arena but certain people there not just that one guy but all, all those people there should really be a lot of those people there should be ashamed of themselves yeah i mean part of it goes back to the, the home field advantage right having it at the host school you know that that doesn't necessarily help things like that but you know i think it's a few people just acting ridiculous you know but you can't say enough good things about burrows right it's like i mean I was telling everyone, it's like a, it's amazing. Like, I think of like Burroughs, Dake, Taylor, um, Adeline Gray, Helen Rulis, like these people. It's like since since our company began, like since we, you know, both left our jobs, you as a, a fully, in, fully incorporated, yeah. Yeah, me as as a, a financial advisor. Like once <laughs> we left our jobs and we did we were full time wrestling mindset 2012. These are the people that we were blogging about. These are the people that we were making articles about. These are the people that we were making our podcasts about. And the fact they're still competing made it extra special to be able to watch it. Right. And it's like, you know, that you can't say enough good things really about all of them, but Burroughs, like being just a phenomenal ambassador for the sport. It's like, you know, high character, you know, strong faith, family life, right? He's got five kids now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's one of those guys like, what, what hasn't he done for the sport? You know, he's changed wrestling for the better and he plans on continuing to change wrestling for the better. So it's like any, anything against him is, is just downright wrong, you know? So I don't know. Shout out yeah. to Barrows. Hopefully he comes back. I, I've heard some talk about him, you know, looking to make the world team at 79 kilograms, you know, making another run at it. I think it's going to be tough. I think it's because he's going to be wrestling those, you know, I'm sure Nolf will be looking for that spot as well. Um, it's it's going to be tough. Hopefully, hopefully he does. But it's like we talked about, like, you know, if you lose, he's going to put his shoes on the mat. It's like, not there, not in that oh, setting. Oh, heck no. <laughs> he's not going to give him the satisfaction. That, that's exactly what I was thinking. He don't deserve it. Yeah, no, don't don't give him the satisfaction. Absolutely not. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then how about his match against Messenbrink? So watching it, and again, you got you to gotta love the way Messenbrink competes. Like, he's, he's, he's all at it. But uh, being down there, ground level, and just watching it up close and being a basically Matt side for that match. He was poking the line a little bit too much. The line, yeah. <laughs> the Nittany line was poking the line a little bit too much. And I get it. Messabrink likes to have fun and I'm, I'm all for that. I'm all for like the clapping a little bit, a little bit too much of the antics, like body out of bounds, holding his legs a little bit too long, uh, jumping into positions that he didn't really need to. It's like, yeah, I, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm watching. Yeah, you kind of got the sense Matt level that, 
there's only so much Burroughs is going to take before he starts defending himself. You know, you got Burroughs who's towards the end of his career. He's looking to make make another team. He's looking to just wrestle. And Messenbrink, there was a lot of like extras, right. yep. a, lot, a lot of antics. And it's like, it's only a matter of time. And then he pushed his head and the whole place just goes nuts. And it's like, you know, I mean, I get it. Like, you maybe shouldn't have pushed his head like that. But on the other hand, it's like, well, what what are you going to do? Like, what would you do in those situations? It's it's hard. Like the whole time you're, you're getting it. And then at the end, I don't know exactly what, what went on, but it sounded it looked like Burroughs was trying to like maybe encourage him or like teach him a lesson at the end. Like he tried to like talk to him and like mess him, bring him on here. And then he kind of pushed him again. But if you watch that, that wasn't as blatant. He just kind of like shoot. He kind of like shoot him. If you watch his hands, it wasn't like a, you know, a blatant push. But the whole place was already booing him. And you're like, this is going to be real bad. It, it, going was, it was an unfortunate match. Like I mean, I, I love watching him wrestle. I'd love to see him wrestle again. Um, in fact, I think it'd probably be a little bit closer if uh, Messenbrink was a little bit more calculated, you know, keep the same style of intensity, but a little bit more calculated. But like, I mean, they're getting on Burroughs and they talked about this on the um, Bash Mania podcast, Willie, Willie and Justin. It's like he had a sock pull and people went crazy. Like, you know, he went he out of bounds, pulled up the socks and it's like people were like as if he was taking, you know, five minutes to get back to the yeah. center. It's like, give, give this guy a break. <laughs> you know, and he yeah. was up like six or seven, nothing at the time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the whole we get it. No, no, I'm I'm all for it. I'd be one of the first people to say, hey, like, let's get back to the middle. We yeah. don't want to stall. But you get to take a second. You get to take a second. And I don't like that when either. Well, the referees didn't do it to him. But a lot of times I've seen in co in, in co uh, college or high school, it's like the refs like trying to like insert their will into the match. You didn't see that here, but like the crowd kind of doing that's like I get it that that's just how it is. But I don't know. Just give the guy a break. And then so then against yeah. Nuff. Obviously, well, well, here's comes... the, well, here's the thing. I was like, after that match, I was like, man, this is, this stinks because then it's like you just read into the future, right? It's like <laughs> now he's going to beat Nolf, and then he'd have to beat Dake twice. So it's like it's Penn a really State, Penn State, yep, yeah, it's a really uphill battle for for Burroughs, and it's like you know difficult to, to end well there, you know, and and it's like so that that was tough too, <laughs> you know, like just no, just seeing that, um, you know, was was not an ideal circumstance for yeah. the goat. Yeah, and that's and then that's the naturally that brings us right to the um the Nolf match, and um Nolf basically shut him down. I mean he's he did a good job with it, with his body awareness and an awesome blast double. Burroughs just didn't seem to be able to get that offense going like the past. And again, it's tough. Like he's a he's a power wrestler, and obviously he's got a lot of a lot of other good good quality great qualities too. But I mean you know he's he is a power wrestler, and when you don't have that and when that power double isn't isn't working, it's it's hard. And again, these guys are scouting him; they're coming after him, and then. You know, when he lost, obviously. So I, I was right mid center for that one. And then when he lost, I, I literally jumped behind him. I had the camera going. Um, I watched one of the one of the videos from one of the other news sources. You couldn't see me because I was like literally right behind the trainer, and I was right there as the whole crowd was basically booing him. And then right when he got to the end, and that guy who you know acted like a complete jerk and yelling, and I'm like, that was one of those things that really in my head, I'm like, this just wasn't right. And I mean, um, Manning got upset. He yelled back at the guy. Bur Burroughs came back and said to me, hey, what, what have you ever done? You know, and it's like, that stinks. That was a crappy way to go out. And then that was so that was it. So that was it for Jordan Burroughs. So, you know, a real shame. Yeah. Yeah, that was that yeah, was unfortunate. That was yeah, unfortunate. Yeah. So I don't know what to say other than that. The guy just being a complete jerk. It's like, I don't know, a guy like that should probably be removed. I don't know. Can you can you remove the guy from the stadium for that? No, but it's. It's good now that his his face has been exposed on um on some yeah. on some Twitter um videos, but yeah, we'll pray we'll pray for his conversion. The time is now to take your mindset to the next level with Wrestling Mindset. Make sure you go to our website, wrestlingmindset.com, and sign up for your free trial session today. Don't wait any longer. You want the mental edge right now. When you sign up for the free trial session, you're also going to get a copy of our free ebook, Building the Predator Mindset. This book has helped thousands of people build confidence, relax under pressure, get motivated, and build mental toughness in wrestling, school, and life. Make sure you sign up for your free trial session today. And then the next. Correct. And then the next, um, the next one we saw, w w the the other emotional one. So that was real. That was a real emotional one. And Burroughs came in. And the other one where it was like, you know, you really feel like in the zone was the um, Kyle Dake after he won, and obviously coming back. And and right away there, are, you know, questions about you know his dad passing away. We pray for his soul and we pray for the Dake family. And that was just, you could you could hear a pin drop. 
and it was you know for and it went on for a while it seemed like a very long period of time i interviewed i was i was holding up the camera for the first like 30 seconds and you saw dake just wasn't having it's like i didn't i didn't have the heart to keep recording hey who cares about me right there was a whole bunch of other there's about 30 other people but i, I just turned it off i'm like no nah. I, I think it was like a full nine minute interview but it felt like you know 25 minutes just based on the uh it was extremely quiet. I, I was there for almost all the interviews as the people were coming through. This was extremely quiet and a totally different feel. And yeah, that was that was sad. But hats hats off to Dake because after after Nolf basically shut down Burroughs, he pretty much shut down Nolf twice. Nolf didn't really have Nolf with one of the most high powered offense guys didn't really have anything for Dake there. Which um, I mean, it's maybe in a sense apples to orange. But we were talking about this before. It's like. Well, why why does Kyle Day continue to have this sustained success? Not they all, they all had sus sustained success, but it's like basically, why did Kyle Dake win? And then you have Taylor and Burroughs. Why did they lose? You know, and, and not look mm -hmm. so good. And one of the things we were talking about is just that. First of all, Burroughs is older, <laughs> right? He's <laughs> two, three years older, so that's that, that doesn't help, right? When you're coming out of your prime, but the just the way they wrestle, like you said, Burroughs is a power wrestler. Right, whereas Dake, not that he's not a power wrestler, but he's his he's a defensive machine. Right, so I just think that the the rate at which that slows down is probably slower than the rate at which your power doubles or your your power takedown slows down. Right, you're gonna like I, I think of like a, a Sadiev. I, I said before, it's like you know when he won his third Olympic gold, it's like he clearly wasn't in his prime. You know, if you look at him there, it's like, but it's like again, he was a defensive wizard. So. Stuff like that, you just you could hang on to a little bit longer than if he was, um, you know, like Jordan Burroughs and Taylor. It's like those are high firepower guys, and if that slows down a little bit, that has a huge difference, you know, as opposed to the defense, which probably just it goes a little bit slower than uh, than a high powered offense. You say it? Uh, yes, this is. So go Nolf so, over Burroughs. Yep, go to um, look at Knopf's right knee. Go go um go west, or go west. Go to the go to the left. We see you. Yep. Wrestling mindset right there. So I'm being able to watch these kind of things. It was crazy. Also, worthy of note, Dake's uh Dake um Burroughs has five kids. Burroughs has five. Kids. They just had their fifth kid. Yep. Uh, yeah, the f fifth kid. I didn't even realize there was the, the fifth. Um, I, now again. Zane was with his kids. Kyle Snyder was with his with his kid. Um, Adeline Gray. Jaden Cox, which is really nice to see, and especially now as a dad, that for me that got that got me the most choked up out of all of them when when you see them then with their kids after because yeah, especially me yeah, and then be, being away for a little bit, even if it's only a couple of days, it's like yeah, this is what it's all about. So that 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 hit me in a more unexpected way than I, than I thought. Just seeing them with their kids, but Burroughs five kids, and again I, again uh, Taylor's got two kids, and Dake has two kids. Dake, I think they might have two. Dake, kids. Dick Taylor, I think one might have one, two, one has three. So it's like they're they're doing it with with let, families too. Let, let me make let me make let me make an important point though. Kyle yeah. uh, Jordan Burrow's son, how old is Beacon? Eight or nine. Eight or nine. So Seven. now I think now I think about the amount. So now here's here's the point. These they all they all have other kids. Look at all the other kids a little bit younger. My point is think about all the wrestle, all you wrestling dads that are listening to us. Burroughs is a nine-year-old son. How think about during the day when we're we're talking business, but we're also racking our brains thinking about how to get our how to get our sons better at wrestling. Yours being eight and six, mine mine just turning uh, five and 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 three, and we're talking about what to do. So Jordan Burroughs, I think about him. It's like he's racking his brain how to how to get his son better. It's just there's a lot of divide. I'm not saying that he has divided focus, but I'm saying his brain is also thinking about yeah. Yeah, that's no, he, different. He does. It is different. But, the, you know, it's like it. you could say it about all of them, right, with their families. It's like they're running businesses. Taylor, I mean, Jordan Burroughs also has his academy, um, his wrestling academy. Um, what's his uh, name? Uh, Taylor. Taylor is his magic academy. man. Yeah. I believe Taylor also has another business. Doesn't he have some kind of like shop, tea yeah. shop or health store or something like that? So it's like. These guys are know, thinking about it. And, you know, not to mention their sponsorships and things like that. They have They have a lot that's going on outside of wrestling and. It affects different people at you know different times and to different magnitudes. But and then you'll yeah, these young guys. Realistically, I think it's like later in your career, you're probably better off being the defensive guy. Oh, and and we're all about offense, <laughs> you know. To you know, it's not like I would rather my kid be a defensive wrestler, but for longevity in a career, 
I think as you get into your 30s, you know, it's going to be easier to to continue as a defensive guy. And that's yeah, obviously no knock to, to Kyle Dake because he could get to his offense too when he needs to. He got the first takedown against um, Nolf. And then I think he, he had him put on the clock twice in the last match, meaning that he was more offensive. But, you know, I just think that that style, that could be one of the reasons why it's like he conti- looks to continue to be dominant, right? And And they seem to be slowing down a little bit. Right, it, just, it looked like, I guess you go into that, it's like, it looked like David Taylor just didn't have the same horsepower as usual. He was in on a few shots, you know, and again, hats off to Aaron Brooks being strong, explosive, you know, good defense. And he wasn't able to, he wasn't able yeah. to, you know, take Aaron Brooks down, which, which is crazy. Think about how many matches. I don't think he got a takedown in either match, right? Did he get right. one maybe? I think Taylor might have got one in two matches. That's unlike yeah. him. Yeah, that's never, that, that never happens. Yeah. And you just, yeah, you just look at it. It's like, but even, you know, guys like uh, Dake Taylor and Burroughs, it's like these guys were behind Burroughs back in like 2012, that if they're wrestling for other countries, I mean, how many, how many medals would have these guys won? And I guess that brings you right to the next point of different countries. It's like, you know, um, hats, hats off to Valencia wrestling team USA, having to, having to possibly go through Brooks and Taylor when he could have just as easily went to Mexico, like his brother, um, um, Anthony Valencia, as well as Austin uh, Gomez. And, you know, it's it's tough for all those guys. You still got to qualify the weight for the country. But it's like, you know, you start to look at it where, hey, if you have a, if you have a chance to go wrestle overseas, you probably should take that because it's going to be a real grinder going through it. And then all you have to do is beat the American once. And if they know who you are, it's kind of like in their head, it becomes a little bit of a mental thing. Like, you know who the guy is. Normally, you wouldn't know who the people are from the other countries as well. But if if they're an American guy, now it's in their head and you just got to beat him once versus everyone. Like we were even saying that with Yanni. It's like, you know, if, if Yanni could wrestle for Greece, <laughs> right, or something like that, like it's it'd be a tough one because you're going to have to beat all of those guys, Nick Lee and Rutherford and all those guys. We're, meanwhile, if you could if you could wrestle for somewhere else, you might have yeah. a better, you know, you might have a better you might and have a better shot. You said so, some people might have a better style internationally than domestically. Right? It seems like Yanni has a really good feel um, internationally. He always does well in international competition. That doesn't mean the other guys won't. But um it's just hard. It's like winning domestically is in very deep weight classes and they're not getting easier <laughs> and they're not getting more of them, you know, when you shrink down this to six weight class. So I guess then we go into uh, 65 kilograms. We didn't touch on that too much. Zane over, over Nick Lee, um, two Nittany Lion wrestling club guys and, you know, longtime Penn State wrestlers. Um, I don't know why yeah, I thought, Zane, Nick, Lee, I mean, I thought Zane, Nick Lee was going to beat him. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess the weight. Picked, I guess I, the weight. I picked, I picked Nick Lee in this weight. I just thought he might have. I thought he might have too much horsepower for Zane, just given the weight cut. You know, it's like Zane and and I, Zane's awesome. I love Zane. I mean, his character and as a wrestler, it's he's intense. He's tough. Great guy off the mat. But I think I thought he wouldn't have the horsepower at that weight, considering he won the world's. I don't know what is it like ten pounds heavier, and um, but man, it's like. He imagine the discipline that took to get down to that weight, you know, maintain that weight or get down to the weight and then wrestle at a high level. Because people forget that too. It's like it's not just make the weight, right? You can make the weight. You got to beat not just good wrestlers, but the best among the best in the entire world, right? So that's why some of them look. It just looks like oh man, it's like what a shame. It's like like guy like James Green or or Pantaleo. It's like those guys have done really well internationally, and then they get down the weight, and it's like it's almost you know sometimes it's sad to watch. But it's like, yeah, well, they're they're wrestling against the best guys in the whole world, and they're down at a weight that you know clearly isn't the best weight class for them. <laughs> Let's face it, yeah. you know. But you know, hats off to them going for it, right? The discipline it takes to get down to that weight and put it on the line, you know, the whole the man in the arena. Hats off to them. So what else? Sixty five kilograms. Um, what else? I guess I guess you got to talk. We talked a little bit about and Mendes, wrestling. Right? Awesome. Four or five wins. Four, five, and two. He beat McKenna once badly, and then he lost to him for third, I believe. And, McK- and McKenna and and, Bar- and Bo Bartlett had a heck of a match. Bo wrestled, Bo wrestled tough, also. And it's like how yeah. the fact that there's no back points for a count. It's like he he almost had McKenna pinned for like about forty seconds, and McKenna fought off his back. And then it's like he gets his hand raised at the end. And you're like, how did that happen? It's like when you're not used to thinking about it like that. But you know, I I saw. You know, we're um, we're Pennsylvania Regional Training Center. Well, not we, but like, we're you know, we're University of Pennsylvania alum. And so we have a lot of connections over there. We're constantly at um, PRTC events 
and and you know dinners and 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 the like. And we saw Joe and we I saw Joe McKenna going up in the elevator with um, McFadden. And I then I told him I said, man, I said this to Coach Reyna also before I said, man, there's a lot of really good wrestlers that don't fight well off their back, right? And I mean the fact that he fought like that again, it's, it's this common thing. You could see this at all different levels, but the fact that he fought and he and he made the comment on on the elevator like. I thought about just getting pinned and I said, yeah, that's, that's a common thought in anyone's head. Like maybe yeah. I just, maybe I just don't fight as much. And he said, well, no, I'm going to, if he's going to beat me, if he's going to pin me, he's going to have to actually pin me. And it's like, that's the right attitude. And it's, it's funny to think about, like, you have to also have a plan. We talk about knowing what you're going to think in these moments. You should have a plan of what you're going to think if you're on your back, like what you you know, what you're going to tell yourself in that moment, because it's hard. It's going to be a hard fight. You're getting your neck torqued. And, you know, they, and, you know, it's easy to give up and like people are kind of, and the other thing is like, people are kind of forgiving there in terms of like, oh yeah, you know, he just got pinned, right? Oh, you just got caught or yeah, you, you know, he got pinned. He was on his back, but it takes a lot of guts to fight off his back and then coming back and then winning it for uh, winning third. So yep. that's, you know, that's, that, 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 like we said, that's health insurance for another year. <laughs> that's right. Top three or top four, get health insurance. It's a big deal. Yeah, um, especially these guys, they have three, four, five kids. You're going to need that. It gets expensive. It does. Um, I, I know. Um, I guess next week we got we got Kyle Snyder making his, I think it's the 10th world team in a row. Yeah. Or, um, what? Or, yeah, largely uneventful. Not nothing really like I didn't really, I, you know, I, it, they're, good, they're good weights and everything. He, he was an easy pick, right? I would say it's yeah. like that was one of them that I felt that the best about. It's like Kyle Snyder is going to win this weight. Um Obviously, Jaden Cox in there, but like we haven't seen him wrestled in so long. And hats off to him. Like, I for me, it was like it was pretty emotional when he left his shoes in the mat. Um, you know, we've been watching him for a while, we've been you know talking about him in podcasts and blogs for a long time. Jaden Cox, and it's like there was a period of time when he was on his game where he looked like he was impossible to take down, <laughs> right? It's like <laughs> it's like he he won two two world championships it's like he medaled a bunch of times bronze medal in the olympics he was a guy that just was was always entertaining you know always always humble good good champion on and off the mat and that that's just a t I, I don't know those are emotional moments that's that's um that's it's tough to watch but it's like yeah it's eventually time gets to everyone and um he just you know he didn't seem to he didn't seem to be in the hunt against like a kyle snyder who's still looking good um like i said Easy, easy pick for me, Kyle Snyder at that weight. He was dominant, made his 10th team. I remember a while ago, Tom Ryan said he nicknamed Kyle Snyder, Kyle Sustained Success Snyder. And I think he's been proven right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's and probably I proven right before that, but 10 years in a row. And he's, oh, yeah. he's meddled every year. I think he's meddled every year. Something like that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's nuts. And again, someone like Cox, who is a two-time world champ and Olympic bronze medals, like yeah. he's really, he's really good. It was, it was definitely emotional see, seeing him down there and, you know, be, being down there, Matt side, seeing, you know, his, his family. And I got to speak with Whit Whitney Condor, his wife, who is also a great American wrestler. Um, we, we worked with her year. I remember speaking to her years back when she was making her, her runs at wor worlds and Olympics and everything. And, and she said like, you know, I, I know what it's, she told Jaden, this wasn't in during the interview. This is while they were interviewing him. I was speaking to Whitney, to Whitney. He was holding both of her, the, the kids. And I'm like, Hey, do you want a chair? And she's like, no, I'm good. And she's like, and I just told Jaden, like, you know, whatever you need, I'm, I'm here for you. I'll, I'll do whatever you need me to do. You know, you just, you, you, you focus on what you have to do. So, and obviously, you know, it's not just her, all the, all the wives and like the commitments to that, that all these people, and even a lot, and even a lot of the wrestling, the wrestling coaches, and the people, it's like the wives give up a lot. Like we were away from our families, but I mean, these guys, it's like they're, they're, they're away, you know, they're away constantly a lot, but yeah. Um, I, I don't think she knew he was retiring. That was like news. Really? To, that was <laughs> really, that, that, that was news to, to Whitney. Um, his, 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 his wife, when that happened, That's crazy. Like, and I, I remember discussing this, with a few people, it's like, this should have been addressed. This should have been handled a while ago. Like, Hey, what's, what's yeah. our one year plan? What's our five year plan? But you know, you, uh, you sometimes you don't know when I'm in your head, you have to be, you have to be a little bit delusional to believe it's like, I'm going to win this thing. It's like, otherwise, why would you do it? So it's like, then it happens. It's like, yeah, I, I didn't really feel like I had it anymore. And it's like, I think it's time. <laughs> well, then, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think about that too with like Taylor. I'm like, if Taylor loses, he's going to leave his shoes on the mat. Right. Because like, number one, it's like, that would be, that would be a touching moment too. Right. But it's also <laughs> yeah, like, at Penn State. Yeah. 
yeah, at Penn State, you know, at his hometown, at his home gym, right? It's like, but it's like, he's there to win. You know, he shouldn't be thinking too much about that if I lose. Like, he's there to win, not just here, but the Olympics. Yeah. He's there, you know, he would have been one of the few, he could have been one of the few Americans ever to win two Olympic gold medals. So he's, he's not thinking about the shoes thing. Right, and, right. Uh, and, and that's the right attitude to have. That's the right mindset. If, if you do it, that's great. Like, if you lose and, you know, you're planning on retiring. But I think if you're thinking too much about that, you know, now you're thinking about your, you know, I'm going to lose. Like, Taylor was there to win, not just this week, but in Paris, you know. Yeah. So, so you can yeah. see why he, why he wouldn't do that because, you, you know, you're not thinking about that. Not to mention you yeah. should make logical decisions and not emotional decisions. I, hopefully all <laughs> these, you would, you would think it through before you just put your shoes on the mat. But yeah, but it's tough because you do you do have to have that attitude where I'm I'm here to win. Uh, and so it's like after uh, after Taylor lost, I mean obviously you know it's great to see for Aaron Brooks. I mean you know again another great ambassador for the sport. Always talks about his faith to the point where they're cutting him off now with the, with these kind of things. Or <laughs> yeah. even even when they're asking him very pointed questions, which is why they, the the one guy made the spoof video of like just continually talking about the faith. And 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 the That's Jesus true. headband and stuff. It's like well, it's like because it's well because he keeps talking about it and that's. We you know we have to say with wrestling, a lot of people talking about their faith. And I said this with David Carr before, where it's like it's it's thanks to he said he doesn't remember a lot of people talking about the faith. And I said, Well, it's thanks to people like him and Brooks yeah. who continually talk about it that now people are getting empowered. So it's it's a great thing. But so okay, so David Taylor loses. Obviously, now we're this this is a moment right here because is he gonna take his shoes off? What's gonna happen? And it's like every single again, being ground level and being mat side, all the wrestlers go out the same way every single time. And now I'm waiting for David Taylor to come out. I run down there, so I'm sitting up there with um next to Bash and the, and the, you know the um the the selective seating, you know the mat side, and boom, I'm running down there waiting for Taylor to come out, and he's not there. And someone's like, "Oh yeah, he went out the back." And I'm like, "What?" It's like every literally every. So now I'm a little bit aggravated because it's literally like every single person goes this way the whole time, and he's out the back. So no one knew where David Taylor went, and this is a guy who is probably like. I mean, uh, uh, as of recent, like our family's favorite wrestler. I mean, of course, we're always John Smith people. We got an exclusive interview coming with him. Uh, not with him, with um, Eric Guerrero. Sure. He's had he's had hundred, literally hundreds of people trying to interview him. And he came to us. He approached me about, I want to do the interview with you guys. It'll be my one and only interview. It was a very heartfelt interview. And the interview was only 22 minutes, but it felt like an extremely long time because he, you know, is a very... Emotional. He was a, like he was we said about the day thing, the more emotional the interview, the longer it feels. Because I guess it's like, in a sense, I don't know, it's uncomfortable in a sense. Yeah, and if and if you watch me interview him, it's like you're going to see a much different, um, you know, much much different Jeans and Eddie, where it's like you know normally upbeat and stuff like that. And it's like yeah, yeah, and it's like even no, not knowing what to react to, we were laughing. And he was like, you know, it doesn't mean you're perfect. And I'm like, nah. Like, I don't know what to, we're just kind of, we're just, you know, like, you don't know how to, you know, you're interviewing people, you don't know exactly how to react. You know, I wasn't trained as an interviewer. And he's like, you know, people aren't perfect. And I'm like, nah, you know, like just kind of, <laughs> just kind of reacting real funny and stuff. But it was, yeah. but it was, it was serious at yeah. the time. And it still yeah. is serious, but you guys are going to see it only on wrestling mindset. Well, David Taylor, we didn't know where he was. He disappeared. Brooks comes down there. All the lights are on him. And then I go in the back because, you know, you get the gr great thing being down backstage you get free coffee and uh, all day. I mean, they, they. I think they could have done a better job feeding us, but That's they right. had, you said no food. I didn't know you had co free coffee. Oh yeah, there was. I mean, there was coffee and a whole soda thing all so all day. I was able to. I had coffee the whole day. So now, that's why now we're catching up. We're double fisting with two, two waters to recatch up on on hydration. But man, okay. So now we're going in the back, and as I'm going back to get another coffee because it's a long event. And there's there's David Taylor sitting like by the media room. We're like not everyone. No one was by him. It was literally him, Jake Varner. I don't know one of the other Penn State guys. I'm sure it's a big name. But I didn't know who it was. And he and he's back there, and it's like he's sitting down, and I'm and I'm like I should be I should be videotaping this because no one was videotaping it. So one but like you know you're also there, and it's like I don't want to you know insult anyone or feel bad. And again, this is like our you know my favorite recent wrestler. So it's like I'm not I'm certainly not trying to rub it in, but. Here you are backstage for the first time. So 
I got like a t you could see as like a, it was like a measly two second clip when they're there, but but it was also I didn't have the, I didn't have the heart to keep the cameras rolling. <laughs> you know, some people are cut out for media. You could see like a lot of these guys when like people are getting yeah. emotional, they could they could care less, and that's their job. They got the cameras right on there. They're not leaving. They'll stay there the whole time. And then these guys post it right away. We could have got that Jordan Burroughs post out with that with that ignorant fan immediately. I still haven't posted it yet. I still feel bad. But so and then David Taylor, then he so I, I let them go in front of me and uh, and then then I'm filming a little bit. And then after I go up the elevator, so I was actually on the elevator up with David Taylor and and Jake Varner and, and that other Penn State coach that I can't I don't know who it was, but they were they were going up. And this is why. So you, you could see the video. You got David Taylor walking one way. You got Aaron Brooks being interviewed over there. And when, when he was sitting down, David Taylor was saying something like either something to the effect of. I just couldn't get my offense going or he said like I just didn't give myself a chance in that match or something I, again I didn't have the heart to st stick around for that but anyway I, f I followed them up the elevator and now you're and now again ever it's like time is slowing down and your mind's racing like should I say something I wanted to say you know you're hey you know you're our favorite wrestler I, I didn't know what I was going to say but we're up in the elevator I just didn't I just didn't look at him and then when it came time to go out he he went out and I just stayed in but he he didn't go up to the top floor he went out to like a select so when you go up the elevator there's the bottom floor there's two and then there's three which is the top and he went out some kind of like select way with like Penn State all like nice it must have been the nice amenities for the Penn State guys well he went out a different a different spot than most people would go out with the guys but it was sad yeah like you said, he's our favorite wrestler it's just the way he wrestles yeah, you know, I mean, we love we love Dake too, but it's like the way Taylor wrestles, just more offensive. Crazy yeah. that Dake used to beat him all the time, right? But like, and Burrows, <laughs> just the way he put up points. Yeah, it's like the way he put up points and the way he wrestled. Um, I'm thinking folks going back to folk style too, because Burrows mm -hmm. put up a lot of points, but folk style he would turn people, he would pin everyone, right? It's like Burrows would, maybe would get more takedowns in a match, but Taylor would pin people, turn them. It's like this guy's real good, and then he like pins him in thirty seconds, or he beats him like twenty-one to five. It's like what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like what? It's just, it's just crazy. And then of course at heavyweight Mason Paris, um, just like clockwork. So not really much to say there. It's just he wrestled great. He dominant. Yeah. He's gonna have a, he's gonna have a good chance I, out there. I, was, I, I picked him. I thought. I mean, obviously he medaled in the world last year, world bronze medal. So he's sitting up top. So it's kind of an easy pick before the tournament, and um, and the fact that he's been training freestyle. You know, exclusively. A lot of people pick the the Penn the Penn State heavyweight, Kirkley. But I I just thought that a year of freestyle. And he's big too, right? He's got to be close to the limit. Um, yeah. he's looked good. He's jumped levels in the last you know year or two since he's been done with with college wrestling. So, I mean, that's the team. We got to qualify two weights. We got to still qualify Spencer Lee, Zane Rutherford. You got to feel good about them qualifying, but it's like it's only top three, and it's like anyone who hasn't qualified. I don't know. I, I don't like that about the Olympics too. That it's like that difficult. I think back to like Jordan Oliver. He finally broke through, made the Olympic team in 2020. I guess it was 2021, and then it's like he didn't make the finals. I thought top two had to make it, and it's like and he didn't qualify the weight. It's like, come on, you couldn't tell me he wouldn't he wouldn't be in the hunt at that weight. You know, it's like, you know, the U.S. the U.S. is so good, so. That stinks, but but we got we got ourselves a team. Yeah, no, it's um, we're gonna be we're gonna be ready for Paris. It's gonna be great. So and, other and, and, other, and, other shout outs. I was, I was thinking about you got it one twenty five. Marcus Blaze took third, high school wrestler. Right, it's like Jack. Yep. He beat, who did he beat? Is it Jack's Force? He beat for third. Yeah, yeah, he wrestled phenomenal. We got to get Jack's guys. We're, we're, we're gonna, gonna get we're Jackson gonna try to get those fight. guys. We're, we're gonna try to get those guys in the show. It's like I mean. You know, they're beating these these seasoned senior level wrestlers. Um, and they look good. Like I said, it's like um one of the Jack Sports gave us, yeah. Thomas Gilman all he could handle. <laughs> right? It's like he basically Gilman had to shut him down for a full three minutes and not let him score to win that match. Five four. Um so it's like these guys are ready. It's like it speaks to the mindset, right? It's like obviously there's gotta be a ton of training, but to have these high school guys believing that they could compete and win against you know, these legends, you know, we're talking legends of the sport, Thomas Gilman, like you said, one of the top, one of the most successful lightweights of all time in America, you know, and these guys are coming out believing that they're going to beat him. Um, in Greco, we had the guy, Alexander, uh, stinks. I don't know. I don't know his, his last name, 44 year old. He made the finals. That's nuts. 
in Greco. Yeah. 44. 44. Yeah. Unbelievable. I mean, it just, it just shows there's, I mean, you got it. You got to believe in yourself. It's a lifetime commitment to work. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what more to say. It's just, it's, it's, it's hard. The guys are really good. Impressive. And, it, you know, you yeah, got to, um, yeah, it's, um, it's crazy. Nate, Nate Jackson. We got to give a shout out to our mindset. Nate Jackson. Yes. He looked, he looked good. He came back. He took third. He was pretty dominant too on the way back. Just, he looked awesome out there. So shout out to Nate Jackson. If you're listening, he might be your mindset coach. One of our yep. premium mindset coaches He's doing a great job for wrestling mindset. Um, and that, yeah. that's, you know, it's, it's hard for him to do that as a senior level wrestler. And, you know, it's like real hard. A lot of times they get a bad rap for like being selfish because they got to focus so much on their own, you know, journey in wrestling and their, their training and their commitment and, and not to mention their other life obligations, but for him to do that and be an awesome mentor, you know, to so many wrestling mindset wrestlers, you know, we, I know we really appreciate that. And and so do his athletes. So yeah. So if you are, yeah, awesome. if you want if you if you want your kid to work with Nate Jackson, who just took third, let us co contact us and um put in the code Nate Jackson. There's no code. There's no code. You just know, mention you know, it. Well, you know, you, know, you go to our website. You, you have a, you have a form you have to fill out uh, an application to fill out, and there's additional notes yeah, you could say, write in there. I want Nate Jackson to be just, my wrestling mindset just, coach. Just say, yeah, exactly. And one one point we should probably also make with that, where we're saying that just kind of joking around. I mean, you could do that, of course, but sometimes the best wrestler is not always the best fit for your kid just because you, like yeah. we're looking at when, when you when someone signs up for wrestling mindset, when you sign up for wrestling mindset, the first thing we do is, well, you pay and then you fill out a parent questionnaire and the parent questionnaire. We want to know um, your kid's personality, their goals inside and outside of wrestling. We also want to know um, times that you're available. I mean, we're trying to work around the, you, you know, your kid's schedules. So we have the benefit of having almost 100 mindset coaches. We could find someone who could who could best accommodate um, your family. Yeah. And that's important. Yeah. And, and, a lot of and a lot of times, again, just because, you know, just because a person is, is a high profile name or a lot of times people, they're like, they say to me, it's like, hey, I want you to work with my kid. I'm like, I might be one of the worst mindset coaches for your kid because I'm, I'm wearing so many hats with, you know, I'm thinking podcast my, you know we're thinking management of the company we're traveling and you want these mindset coaches who are like clockwork who are you know this is the main thing that they're doing it's yeah you know, it's, it's it's just different so it's, it's, it's we're, what, good i was just gonna say this is one of those situations where you really have to trust the experts it's like one of the strengths of our company is matching wrestlers with a good coach like you said it, it's not just about how successful the coach is on the mat right it's the personality it's their goals it's their schedule Right, you could have a guy who fits really well, but their schedules don't work, right? And and right. and so, you know, there's there's just a lot of factors. Personality is important. Temperament, um, what their goals are, what their age are, right? There's certain coaches that are better with the younger athletes, um, women wrestlers. Like, there's just a lot of factors. So, you know, that's one of those where it's like, trust the experts. Our business would not have been successful if we weren't able to match people because it's it's, yeah. You know, obviously there's the there's the mindset, right? There's the lessons, the peak performance lessons, the, the foundation mindset. But it's like it, half of half of the success is in the relationship. Right? You oh, have yeah. to have the relationship. And that goes for anything. You know, yeah. a teacher, a coach, it's like the, the relationship that you have is you know, at least fifty percent of, of you know the success of uh, any mentorship relationship for, for certain. It's it's huge. And we were able to we were able to crack that code thanks to our good team behind us. Um uh, name, namely Jay Connor, um, and Anthony Mastrangelo and, you know, Bo Tillman, our, our team, our, our, our man, you know, our, our, our core team where we're, we're able to match people up. That's, it's a real big deal. It's been, it's been incredibly helpful and, you know, at, the, at these tournaments and we had it again, of course, no different here. Uh, people come up to us from around the country, us being a virtual company. We see a lot, we, we don't see a lot of the people that we work with. And people come up to me and they say, or come up to us and we'll say, hey, my kid's in your program. And I'm always like on edge at that moment because you never know what they're going to say. But like literally almost every time they, I mean, almost every single time, what a great experience it's been and how much it's helped the kids. And, you know, because when the hardest things with, with the business, like, you know, you have to kind of like clone yourself. Like, yeah, I could only help so many people, but if, but, but if, if we could cultivate multiple mindset coaches, we could help a lot of people. So it's always, well, how do you clone yourself? And it's, you know, being able, it's not really so much cloning yourself. It's great selection. It's great training. It's um, the right people and, and, and finding the right fit. 
So you got to trust us that we're going to find the yeah. right fit, the right fit for your kid. Well, one of the things that I like about the fan fest, you know, we had a vendor booth there and obviously like, you know, we're trying to grow our business and, you know, meet new people, but it's, it's awesome when, when we have clients coming up to us and it's like, you know, I had, I had it several times, you know, at the fan fest and then just in the hallways, right. Just in the hallways at, at the, uh, at the event in the arena. And I'm um, actually one guy, you took a picture of, he did the mindset blast and we'll yeah. give a shout out. His name is Cipriano Duran from Colorado, 10 U. He, um, he, the dad and him, they stopped us, me and, and my kids when we were walking around in the arena. He's like, he's like, Hey, are you, you know, do you know Z? I was like, yeah, well, I, I am Z too. You know, I was like, I was like, I was, did you meet my brother? And then I looked a little closer. I was like, wait a minute. I was like, you were, you were up on our page yesterday. You did our mindset blast. And he's like, yeah, I did the mindset blast. And I asked him, he, he remembered it. And, um, you know, he took pictures. I had a, a, my kids take a picture with him. And, um, you know, the, the dad was grateful. Awesome family. But it's like, it's just really cool to see that, the impact that we're having on wrestlers that, you know, the follow our podcast, do our program, and then and then some to just follow us on Instagram, you know, and appreciate the the blogs and, and information that we put out there. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a really cool thing. Um, that's why this kind of content is key. So, I mean, always let us know what you want to talk, what, what you, what you want us to talk about. See, a lot of people don't realize that it's like when you're, when you're a media, when you're a media company too, not a media company, but you have a media channel, it's like, you have to keep coming up with content. So it really helps us when you say, Hey, you know, like, can you talk about this? We could talk about that. And we still have a lot of inter uh, interviews for all Americans that we're going to post and that we're going to do. And we're going to look to snag some of these guys and uh, guys are just one. Yeah, we, we got to touch on, we got to do a little segment on on uh, the women's wrestling. You know, you, you talk about legends, right? And it's like, you know, we talked about Dake, Taylor, Burroughs. Okay, well, you got Adeline Gray, you know, who made the finals. It's like, came up a little short. But, um, you know, what she's done after, you know, having twins like a little bit over a year ago, she made the world team last year, you know, and she was back again in the finals. Like, what she's, what she's done for wrestling is amazing. You have... Um, Helen Maroulis, who looked who looked phenomenal. I mean, she she seems like she's at her best, which is which <laughs> which is crazy. You know, yeah. again, legends in the sport. Um, I always enjoyed watching her wrestler. Like technically, you know, she's always been you know amazing. And then just like footwork, you know, she's she seems like she's on her game. She's going to make a run to win. So two legends, Sarah Hildebrand. She's she's coming into legend territory too now, right? Yeah. How many oh, yeah. world teams has she made? I mean, and she's in the last couple of years, she's been absolutely dominant. She's been she's been on a bunch, and then yep. you get, and and then you know yeah some you know Kayla Miracle being back again. She's two time Olympian. Um, Kennedy Blades, you know, d the throwing she, out of Adam Gray. She she looked awesome. I mean, you just watched the tournament. I was like, yeah, and, and just like see and actually seeing her up close and like what she looks like. And like how tall she actually is and athlete has, you know, in her matches and just like yeah. a physical specimen. <laughs> I was watching her at the tournament. I was like, this girl's good. I think she's gonna be the, the you know, our Olympian. So that's that's nuts. Like again, like a, a changing of the guards thing. It's gonna be extremely hard for Adeline Gray, I think, to beat her again because it's like she just keeps getting better every time they they meet. And it's like you got you got twins. It's hard. You know, so right. That's right. A meet allure. How many world titles does she have already? You know, she makes her first Bunch. Olympic teams, uh, first Olympic team. And, you know, she's, I guess, legend territory too, right? She won three world championships in one year. Um, then you got to go back to give, giving the shout out to Valentin Cleek again, who trained both her and Helen for many years from when they were young and, you know, yeah, getting them without a doubt to jump levels. So, yeah. and, and also another, and also, it's another high power team. And you, you could also say probably giving them a style too. That's very sustainable because they're doing foot sweeps. Yep. They're not, you know, you're, you're, you're not, they're not taking dive bomber shots underneath girls and stuff. So they're not tearing up their bodies as much. It's like, you know, there's, there's another way to wrestle. It's like, we think it's like, you got to shoot, you got to get to the leg. You do need to shoot and get to the leg. That is important. And the, and these girls <laughs> can, but it's like, you got to be able to do a lot of other things too. That goes, you know, guys, girls, anyone. So. Great yep. stuff. Another great Olympic trials. And um, we're going to see everyone in Paris. Well, we're not going to be in Paris, but we're going we're gonna to have the, we're going to have a keep uh, lead up to Paris. Hopefully we could interview all these guys. All right. Who would you least like to wrestle out of the champs? And Probably, still chance Probably still chance Marsteller. Probably <laughs> still chance Marsteller. Still chance Marsteller. When they had, when they had, had a wrestler. when they showed, when, when they showed him, when they actually showed him, uh, we were watching his matches. Especially again. up at this weight. 
he Anytime, looked, if, you, if you thought he looked uh, thick at, at 79 kilograms, now look at him. And you're like, well, maybe you could get his ankle, get a low single. It's like his calf is like that. that it was, it's funny because it seems like I'm always watching him wrestle around different crowds of people. And like everyone is saying the same thing. They're like, and the one guy, you know, being Matt's side, the one guy's like, he's just thick in all kinds of different spots than you're used to people being like, like thick. That's so it's, funny. um, just strong. It's like they're like, and people like you know his his you know his stance and his legs are so far back. And how do you get to him? So still still probably chance. Dake's got to be up there too because I'm pretty sure it's like he yeah. just get thrown. Yeah, and and Dake. I, I don't want to get. I don't want to get hurt. Um, yeah, D yeah, Dake's Dake's another guy where it's like yeah. You know, there's a lot of people who say I heard, I forget who said this the other day. This isn't my original content, but someone said it the other day. They're like, um with who Dake was going to wrestle in the finals. Like, I really don't think he cares. And is there like, and a lot of people like say they don't care <laughs> like who I wrestle. But it's like, I really don't think Dake's like one of those few people. It's like, I really don't think he cares who he's wrestling in the finals of this. And, um, yeah, you know, anyone, right. anywhere, anyone, anywhere, anytime for free. Yeah. I, I guess I would say too, in the comments, let us know. It's like, if you like these recaps, we don't we don't do them that frequently, right? We did them, maybe did something after the NCAA's, but um, might have, yeah. It seems like there's there is high demand for it, and you know we're going to be doing a lot of interviews with. We want to know what you guys want more of, right? Is it recaps like this? Long is form, it, yeah. Is it is it short interviews with top wrestlers? Is it the coach interviewing the coaches? Is it the long form to sit down? You know the one that we did with with Ernie Monaco and Jeff Buxton. Who uh, ran into Jeff Buxton a couple times at the um, at the Olympic trials? He didn't he didn't watch yet. He said he doesn't like listening to himself talk, which which is common for most people. Um, but but like that did really well. People really appreciated the sit down. So we're gonna be we're gonna be you know arranging some more of those. But we want to know what what content you guys want, and we want to be able to provide it. Let us know. And we'll put it out there. Wrestling mind. So whether it's wrestling, school, business, or life. Mindset makes the difference. Have a great day.